So we're doing solving using substitution. And essentially what we're solving is the point of intersection between these two lines. We know they're both lines, and we could solve this by graphing. If we were to do so, we'd set it equal to y. We'd have this, and we'd have y is equal to negative 7 plus 3x. Those would be our two linear y equals mx plus b style if we're going to graph it. But we're going to do something a little different instead. Instead of having to set it equal to y and go through the graphing, we're going to solve by something called substitution. Okay. We have two equations. I'm just going to quickly number them. Equation 1 and there you go. equation 2. What we're going to do is we're going to set either equation 1 or equation 2 equal to one of the variables. So there's two variables in each of these. Okay? And in order to solve two variables, you need at least two equations. Okay? Just like what we have here. What we're going to do is I'm going to set the first equation equal to x. Okay? The reason we're going to do that is because we need to know what x is the equivalent of. So in order to do that, I need to move y to the other side of the equation. In which case, we're going to get x is equal to 5 minus y. I could have set the equation equal to y. It doesn't really matter. Okay? But now that I've done that, what's important is we have a value for x. We know that x is also the equivalent, or I can replace x with 5 minus y. So what that means is in our next case, the x, I'm going to substitute this value in for x in the other equation. So our other equation will now read 3, I'll do it in red, times 5 minus y minus y equals 7. So if you noticed, what I've done here is I've replaced this x with 5 minus y, which is exactly what we had as equal to each other on the left side. Okay. Now that I do that, I need to isolate the only variable left. And the only variable left in this equation is y. So we're going to solve for y now. So when I'm going to solve for y, I need to distribute. We're going to get 15 minus 3y minus y equals 7. Okay. Negative 3y minus y will give us negative 4y. We still have 15 over here. I need to get y by itself. So, in other words, I need to move the 15 to the other side of the equation. When I move it over, what's it going to become? Negative. So we get negative 4y is equal to 7 minus 15. What is 7 minus 15? Negative 8. Good. Negative 8. Finally, our goal again is to isolate y. So I need to divide by negative 4 on each side. What is y going to equal in the end? Okay. y equals 2. We're not finished though. The reason we're not done yet is because I only actually have a value for y, an actual numeric value. In the other one, we have an equation. So I still need to solve for x. Now at this point, remember we used equation 2. That's why we left it on this side to find y. So it would seem logical to plug the y back into the opposite equation. But actually at the end, once I have a value, I can technically plug it into either equation and we should be able to find out what our x value is. The only time we have to go to the other equation is when we first take one equation, set it equal to a variable, and we have an expression. The expression has to go into the opposite equation. I can't plug this expression back in here. And if you tried it, what you would get, and I'm just going to show you on the side, just so you know. We'll do it in uh, orange here. If I were to plug that back in for x, let's say, so we're going to say this is not the right way to do it, I would have 5 minus y plus y equals 5. Well, what's minus y plus y? We know y. There would be no variable left in the equation, and I would just have 5 is equal to 5, which doesn't help us at all because we're trying to find an actual variable. Okay? So that you would notice that mistake if you plugged it back into the same equation. 
Okay. So just make sure you plug it into the other equation when you go about doing this. So we're going to take y, plug it in to the very first equation again. So x plus, and instead of using y, we're going to use 2 equals 5. x is equal to what? 3. Okay, 5 minus 2, which is 3. So our final answer in this question is x is equal to 3, y equals 2. And that is technically a coordinate. Okay? So our coordinate, the point of intersection of the two lines, is at 3 and 2. That's our x value and our y value.